Hey guys, welcome again here. We're at Gifted Citizens and I'm here with my friend. My friend, friend. <laughs> yeah, they <was> it friend. <laughs> I'm here with my friend, Fernando Botelo. How's it going, Fernando? Very well, thank you. Good it's an honor to be here. Well, good to have you here. Fernando, tell us a little bit about F123. That sounds to me like you're raising cars like the Formula One or something like that. Is well, that well, not quite, not quite. <laughs> Well, F123 is a project that uses technology to improve access to education and employment for the blind. I am blind myself and I was able to uh, get uh, an education, to get a number of jobs in different countries and that's only because I had access to the right technology. We want to make sure that that's not an exception but that that's the rule for all blind people around the world. I mean, I'm sure this is a very personal project for you because you have been benefited by it in a way, in many ways, actually. But how, how do you apply this technology? How, do, how does F123 work? Okay, so we have a number of technologies. The one we are introducing today is called F123 Access. And what it does is blind people, sometimes when they are using their software, their screen reading software to, in, to access the internet, they have difficulty on graphics on certain websites, on the way some sites are designed on the internet. And what F123 Access does is that it corrects the accessibility problems. It breaks the barriers that are so common today on the internet. Are you speaking like the use of flash that maybe gets in the way or j j like the, the, even the images like JPEGs? Yes, or? exactly. Sometimes uh, website designers, because they are in a hurry, or because they do not know uh, much about blinder, uh, blind users. Sometimes they use graphics without placing labels, text labels behind those graphics. So this is something that will not bother anybody who is sighted. But if you do not put those labels, the people who are blind, they have a very difficult time using those websites. I see. So it's like they're, you're excluding a certain sector just by not doing the the way that the, the way the labeling should be. Exactly. And we are talking about 285 million blind and visually impaired persons around the world. So it's a fairly significant number of persons who need to access this technology in order to study and work. And um, once once you've uh, worked through this, F123 now does this recognition. What comes next for F123? Well, we hope to expand our project. Right now, our software is available for blind persons that speak Spanish, Portuguese, and English. And we want to expand it to 17 other languages within the next three years. 17? 17 other languages, yes. And achieve or reach about 10 million users in the next six to seven years. Well, sounds like a very promising and it's already, you know, you can see the the fruits already coming from this project. Uh, I would like to make you some questions, some free, you know, free form questions. Of course. About technology. Mm -hmm. Do you think you, how, how are you going to persuade uh, companies, corporations to adopt your project in their, in their workforce, for example? Well, making their websites accessible to the blind is something that is very profitable. It's something that will allow them to expand the number of customers that they serve. And our project, F123 Access, does that at a fraction of the cost of conventional solutions. And it does that much faster. So usually it may take months between the selling and the implementation and the validation. It may take months to make a website accessible using conventional technology. With our project, it will take days to a few weeks. So you're, you're, you're cutting the, the time and the cost very effectively. Exactly. That's very good. Do you think, do you think it's hard for people to, to, know, to get to know and get to use F123? Is it, is it a hard uh, a software that is, a, that, that is difficult to use? No. The way F123 Access works is it has, it makes the corrections to the website and it requires no new uh, action by the user. So the user continues to access his commands, his websites in the same way as before, We're using the same uh, keystrokes, let's say. I see, I see. However, his screen reader will speak things and it will give him information that before it was not able to. Because now 
Once F123 access does the, the corrections, the screen reader is able to access that information and verbalize it for the user. That's very interesting. It sounds very good. Yes. Um, do you think that your project covers the, the whatever the, uh, whatever user would need in in their in their workstation, for example? Yes, our project is really not application specific. We make corrections to websites problems that are relevant no matter if your website is related to education or employment or anything else. So these, these are technologies or these are issues that can be solved rather universally. It's just a matter of uh, having uh, people interested in reaching a much broader audience. I see. I see. Why F123? Why, why the name? Tell us. Is that, yes. is, that like a, is that like a fun little trivia? Well, you know, back uh, in about uh, 2003, I, I was uh, moving from country to country. I, I worked in the United States, then I worked in Switzerland. I decided I was tired of changing my email address all the time. So I, I got this, this name because I knew that eventually I was going to have a social project of my own. And I didn't know what project it would be. I didn't know exactly what was going to be the focus, but I knew it was going to be international. So a letter so, uh, with a few numbers, that's something you can say in any language. So are you telling me you just made public your, your password for all your emails? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But if anybody's interested in our work, uh -huh. please visit f123.org, f123.org. <laughs> and uh, you can learn more about the stuff we do. And we are lo always looking for partners. We don't do this on our own. We achieve all that we have achieved thanks to the hard work of a lot of people, including volunteers, corporations, and government agencies. Well, I hope that the name, you know, as in Colombia, Fernando Botero is a very common and very very, uh, very proud name that Colombians are proud of. He's way more famous than I am, Fernando but yes. Fernando Botelho is going to become <laughs> a very famous and very proud name in Brazil. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Pleasure.